I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to the recap of the July 2023 Chemnitz Dialong live stream. Last month I picked this beautiful waterfall photo as our color inspiration for July. I was drawn to both the greens and browns of the woods and the trees and then the beautiful teal that we got in the water at the base of the waterfall. And I knew I wanted to create a variegated colorway based on these colors. And I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a yarn lasagna. This is a technique that I like to do with variegated yarn when I'm starting cold with no acid and I layer yarn into a pan, add the acid dyes on top, work it through, then add more dye and more yarn and continue the same pattern. Sometimes I might shift the colors, but today I kept up the same pattern and continue to layer more dye, more yarn, more dye, more yarn until we had eight skeins of yarn in our pan. Then we went and heat set the yarn. In a moment, I'll talk a little bit more about the colors that I had picked, but one thing that was extra interesting for me this time is that I used two different yarn bases in the pan. I used Knit Pick Swish DK and Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. Swish DK is 100% Superwash Merino Wool and Stroll is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And they each had their own half of the pan. So I was always layering Stroll on top of Stroll and Swish DK on top of Swish DK. But now let me take you to the evening after we had done the live stream after I had heat set all the yarn and we're going to remove the layers so that way you can see what differences there are between the top layer and the bottom layer. Please excuse the sounds of my dryer upstairs, but I wanted to peel back the layers of this lasagna on camera. Now we did layer powder on each level before adding the yarn on top and with the lichen that did start to strike right away without any acid. And so this is our first layer. Oh, that is so pretty. The nice thing about this is because the yarn is a little bit scrunched, that does soften some of those color transitions. And we do have our stroll here, our swish DK there, if you are curious. Okay, so that was layer four. Layer three, okay, I have a little bit of white here in between, oh, you can't really see, in between the sour apple and the pecan brown. It's like I filmed this earlier today, I should know. But so far that feels very, very similar. I am not keeping the different layers separate for when we go and wash the yarn, everything will be mixed up. So I'll no longer know. We do have a little more of a light section in the steaminess. <laughs> you can't really see. Uh, so I won't later be able to say, okay, this was the first layer versus the fourth, uh, unless I notice anything. But things are looking so similar, which is what we want. Um, and that's the whole purpose of doing this layered kind of technique. Oh, perfect. Yeah, things feel, I'm sure like when we lay it all out, we'll still see some differences, but feel, things feel so similar, especially because we had like one skein of stroll and one skein of swish all the way down all the layers. But anyway, I'm gonna let that yarn cool and then we can wash it. Uh, but I'm washing it off camera. I realize this is a dialogue recap, not a standard video. And so let's go back and see the finished dry yarn and see what I have to think about it. Here is all of the Stroll fingering weight yarn. And now I can take you through the colors. And I should also have an image that shows the colors in the appropriate order. I use the Dharma acid dyes in lichen, sour apple, pecan brown, moss green, teal green, and then a tiny bit of alpine blue over at the far end. Most of these colors work super well with this lasagna technique. The one that made a little bit of a difference is the lichen. If I zoom in on this end, you can see some speckles and more modeling. 
that's because this color breaks. And so there's a pigment in there that when I layered on the powder started striking to the yarn before I could move it through. Now this happened to be a feature that I liked because it's similar like light coming through trees. It worked for us with our color inspiration, but this might be a color where you might want to dissolve it first and try to work a liquid through to get more coverage if that's what you're going for. And so this is bringing me to a thought about the lasagna technique that I don't know if I've shared before. I prefer doing this technique with dry dye powders because then I can keep the level of water consistent and if I add a little bit more water that isn't also requiring me to add water. It's, I'm adding it because I want it for the technique, not because I need it to add more color. If you're dealing with liquid dyes, you keep adding more and more water as you add more color and then the colors can blend more. So you won't be able to necessarily have six or seven different colors on the yarn without things blending together. And so in general, that's why I prefer to use uh, dry powders, but there could be instances like here where maybe you do need to go and use a liquid if you don't want to have that modeling there. But I just adore how this color turned out. I didn't exactly point this out on the stroll, but all of the yarns look very equivalent and similar. There isn't one that's obviously the one that I dyed first or the one that I dyed last. And I think we'll see a similar thing once I lay out all of the swish yarn together. But this colorway worked super well on thinner and thicker yarn bases. And here's all of the swish DK yarn. Uh, again, it's hard to say blending wise or anything which skein I dyed first and which I dyed last. Uh, which was on the bottom and which was on the top. Which means that this is a technique that works super, super well. <laughs> now, if you want to learn more about any of the tools or equipment I use in my videos, I do have links and affiliate links down in the video description. And I might make a commission if you make a purchase through one of the affiliate links. But I do try to provide all of this information so that way if you want to know exactly what I'm using in my videos, you can easily find my favorite tools and dyes so you can get them yourself. This is our yarn mop and it is stunning. A yarn mop is a skein of yarn that I use to soak up excess dye, or in this case, I would wipe my hands on it. Because sometimes uh, after adding certain powdered colors, especially at the end when I would add powder before going on to the next layer, I would have dye on my fingertips and so I'd wipe them on here. And I did heat set it a few times in between different layers just for a little bit so that way I could continue to add colors. And then it, uh, that allowed me to have these colors feel so layered on top of one another without being completely blended because I did apply that heat. And so here is all of the yarn that I dyed inspired by this waterfall photo. It feels so odd to me to have only two colorways really uh, from one inspiration photo because frequently I dye so many different variations because I have a lot of ideas or can't decide. But this time I knew what I wanted to do and I'm so, so happy with how it turned out. And now it is time for my favorite part of these dye along recaps where I get to include some of the yarn that you dyed inspired by the same photo. I'm so curious to see what kinds of techniques and colors you may have pulled. If you'd like to have pictures of your yarn featured in upcoming Chemnitz Dye Along recaps, all you have to do is reply to the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page, or you can post on Instagram using the hashtag Chemnitz Dye Along, and we have a new handy Google form where you can send me uh, your Instagram handle with a link to the photo so that way I can find it there or you can actually upload photos directly through that form. Fingers crossed that this has worked out okay <laughs> because Instagram made some changes so I can no longer sort images by the most recent posted on a hashtag and that's made it really hard for me to find images. Thank you so much to everyone who died yarn along with me. What types of inspiration photos would you like to see for future months? I originally had a completely different inspiration picked for July, but I did push that back. And so I don't know if I will be using it in August or if we're gonna just push that back a little bit longer as well. But I always love to hear what kinds of themes or pictures or something you would like me to use for inspiration. Uh, Cause a lot of times I pick things from nature, but Sometimes it's really fun 
to pick things from movies and stuff like that as well. So thank you so much for all of those suggestions. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz. Please subscribe and turn on notifications. That way, if a live stream happens more last minute, you can be notified that I'm live so you can come join and watch. And also subscribing is the biggest way you can help support the content. But if you'd like other ways to support the channel, I have tons of links to where you can find me in social media, my Patreon, my Etsy shop, all down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching.